welcome back to the Godot top-down shooter tutorial in 3D. This is part 18. We're going to be putting everything together now, making sure you can shoot the player, the ammo goes down, the health goes down, the lives go down, the level resets, and so on. We're not going to be adding in a game over at this stage, but we do have a little bit of setup to do at the start. So the first thing we're going to be moving on to is the tracer fire. And in this here, what we're going to do is make sure that this rigid body has got continuous collision detection set on, contacts reported just one or more, and contact monitor turned on. This will make sure that it actually triggers this signal, uh, which will delete it from the scene. Other than that, if your trace fire was already working, you don't need to do that. But I'm pretty sure I said I was going to do that in an earlier video, and it turns out I may not have actually done that. So you might have this spaghetti gun um, working at the moment where these things fly into the walls and then fling all over the place. So that is how you fix that, by turning on these options in here. Um, now I don't actually need that to be open. Um, in the player, there's a few things that we're going to add. We're going to add three different nodes. Uh, the first one is going to be a ray cast, and we're going to double click and call that hit scan. It's a good idea to um, name these nodes as to what they do. Uh, unless they're never going to be referenced. So my capsule mesh, which is invisible, and uh, point direction, they're never coming back. I could probably just delete those. Um, and then we're also gonna add in an area, and that's gonna be there with a child, which is a collision. Uh, collision, not collision polygon, a collision shape. Collision shape, and that shape is going to be a uh, sphere shape, cylinder shape, sorry. And move it up one unit and bring it in so that it's slightly bigger than the kinematic body collision shape that's already on there. So slightly bigger than this collision shape. The reason for that is because we're going to use this to detect when the enemy enters our zone. Um, and if we make it in there, because the enemy also has a kinematic body on it, um, they will not actually enter it because the two physics bodies will collide, they'll stop and the area will never be entered. So we make it just slightly bigger and it should be all good. And then lastly, we're gonna add a timer. Uh, this timer is gonna go in here and I'm gonna call it in vulnerability frames. Okay, with this, I'm gonna set it to about 0.5 and one shot. It's not gonna auto start. Now the next thing that we need to do, we've set up our player character. We're gonna go and set up our enemy bullet. And this enemy bullet, has some code on it. Uh, yours may have code on it. Um, no, we don't actually need enemy code on it. What we need to do in here is change this from area to enemy bullet area. Because we're gonna reference this. We're gonna check when this enters um, this area here and we'll do certain things with it. All right, we've got our node set up. Now we need to set up some code on the zombies just so that they have some health. So if I go into the enemy zombie and load it up, I've already done that here. There's two things that you wanna add. You wanna add uh, variable health equals two or however much you want. And I've done it on both different scripts. So you can see on the zombie shooter one, it's got four health. And I've also added this function. So this function is called hit zombie. And when it triggers, it's going to, or when it is called, it's gonna reduce the health by one if the health is less than or equal to zero. You could play an animation here and yield until finished uh, and then Q free. So I don't have the animation, so my one's just gonna delete. Um, but maybe you do have a death animation in there that you've made, and that would be really cool. So what you can do here is go something like dollar sign animation player uh, dot um, play death, whatever you called it, and then it would look like this, yield, Signs of zombie animation player, comma, finished. This line of code here will pause the code at this location and it won't do that until it receives a signal saying that that animation is finished. That signal is automatically sent by the animation player, so you don't need to do anything about it. Just know that it will kind of pause here until the animation is finished and then it's gone. So mine is just going to delete though. And I put that on both of these. All right, now the main part of it is in the player code. 
Now, I may have already done this, so I, I hope that I have not. I'm actually gonna delete uh, some of this stuff and just go through it again um, with you. Okay, so what we want here in the player script is to be able to add in some code that when we fire, the ammo goes down. So let's just go ahead and do that. So first of all, we're going to change this at the top here. So end can fire and we're gonna add player stats dot has ammo. Okay, we have a, we have a script here on user interface, uh, player stats, sorry has ammo, return ammo is greater than zero. It's not gonna return a number, it's gonna return either true or false. If ammo is greater than zero, it'll return true. If it's not, it'll return false. So that's what that code there will do. And so if we have ammo, then we can do this, player stats dot change ammo, negative one. This is gonna reduce the ammo count by one. Let's test it. Oops, I can ignore this. Actually, we can't test it yet because we're gonna come back and do that. But trust me, it'll work in a minute. I'll just have to just pass on these. Okay, we'll go back to the player movement. Um, after we've done that, we want to check to see whether we've actually hit anything. And that's where this code comes in here. Okay, now what this code does, it's function check hit if dollar sign hit scan, which we've made here, is colliding. So if there's a collision in the raycast, we're gonna check what the file name is. And so if dollar sign hit scan dot get collider, so if I open up a zombie shooter enemy here, I'm going to 3D for the zombie shooter TSCN. Here's my zombie shooter. This here is the collider, okay, which is called enemy zombie shooter. But the file name down here is enemy zombie shooter.tscn. Now the reason why I don't just use the name of it is because every time a new one of these is in the scene, it's gonna have a number afterwards, which means that it won't be equal to the name that I wanna check. So what we do is we're gonna check the file name, which will always be the same. And if that's true, we're gonna do hit scan, if no hit scan get collider.hit zombie, which is that function that we put into that module or that um, scene. And then this one here, if it's the enemy zombie, hit zombie, etc. This should now work. I should be able to go in here. I should be able to go and shoot this zombie four times because I know he's got four bits of health and he should disappear. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't. And I can tell you why. It's because this here is not set up right. So let's go ahead and we need to enable the raycast, turn that down to zero because we don't want to raycast along the Y axis. Instead, we want to raycast along the Z axis and the negative Z, so it's actually going forwards. So I put negative 10 on there, and I'll just position it directly in front of the gun. And now when I hit play, the raycast is invisible. One, two, three, four, he's gone. This ammo counter hasn't gone down. So let's go ahead and do that now before we do anything else. So user interface, this is important over here to remember what we called these things. I'm gonna to go to the script for this. And in here, I'm going to set up the user interface code. So this code, the first one, we're gonna set the max health bar value. Health bar dot max value equals player stats dot health max. We didn't write a getter for that, so we won't use it. Now down here, we've got health bar. And so what it's gonna do is every single frame is gonna update this. Uh, that sounds like it might be a lot of processing. It's actually not, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we could make it so it only updates when it changes and that would be fine as well. Um, we could put that into the uh, player stats code to, to run the function on, on this user interface when it, an updated that way. I'm just keeping these really simple. Player stats dot get health. Let's just test that, make sure it works. We should get a full health bar at the top. Instead, I don't. Um, player health, health bar dot value equals player stats dot get health. Invalid set index. Let's see if it just does it with health. Okay, 
Okay, it does do it with health. So I'm not entirely sure why our setter, uh, our getter is not working there. So we'll just do it this way instead. Um, and then we've got mo count dot text equals uh, x space plus. I'm pretty sure this one will work though. Player stats dot get Emma. Okay, now, yeah. there we go, that's working. Okay, so the longer I hold that down, and I suppose I could hold it down for a, for a long time, but my screen's gonna shake an awful lot, and this will work. There we go. Okay, so we've got that. And then we can also do the lives. So life counter, or life count is what mine's called, dot text equals um, player stats dot get lives. Now, if yours doesn't work when you do this, you can just directly refer to ammo and lives, but you may have to, um, you may have to put str in front of it. I'll just show you my uh, player stats code again because I have made some changes to it. What I have done is return a string value of lives, return a string value of MO, but what I should have done here, and I just realized what the problem was, was just return the health. Okay, because health is going into that uh, bit up the top, which needs it to be a number. So I will put this into, um, into here, and I should be able to say get health now, and it should work. All right, now what I want it to do is, when I get hit, I should get shot, and when I walk into the zombie, I should lose life. So let's go ahead and add that code. I'm gonna do it in the player. I'm gonna do it in the player movement script. Probably shouldn't call this movement anymore, but it's done now. And we're gonna to go to the player for this, and we're gonna go down to our area node. And in the node, we're gonna say area entered, and we'll connect that to the player script. And we're also going to go there and say body entered. Okay, so there's two different things in here. The first one, um, on area body entered. If you're not sure if it's working, you can always print body.name to see if something enters that. Let's go ahead and do that. Now you'll see that that bullet doesn't actually trigger anything down here. That's because the bullet is not a player, but if I move up to the enemy zombie shooter, you see that it does trigger it. And I could also do dot file name, which is what we will use. But with this, we know that it's working. It's going down the bottom there. Um, what we're gonna do is go if body dot, I'm gonna put this in brackets, if body dot file name equals enemy, Shooter zombie. What did I call it? It's enemy zombie shooter. RES scenes forward slash enemy zombie shooter dot TSCM. I don't know why the little thing doesn't come up anymore for me. Or body dot file name. Uh, I might put this on a new line here just so you can see it. You can do this, by the way. If body dot file name equals RES colon scenes forward slash enemy zombie, at least I hope you can do this. Um, and I'm gonna have another condition here. Yeah, I can do it, good. And dollar sign in vulnerability frames dot is stopped. Okay, so if this stuff is true, let's just see if this works. Error passing expression, misplaced. Okay, it doesn't look like it's gonna like that. So I'll have to do this on one line, which makes it a little bit hard because it's quite long there. But that's what it looks like. So if body.filename equals that, or that, um, or that. I could probably have a list of enemies. 
Let's go ahead and just do that real quick at the top. Um, mm, bar enemy list equals res scenes. If you prefer not to do this, you don't have to. Enemy zombie dot tscn res scenes versus enemy zombie shooter dot tscn. Okay, there's a list of scenes. Uh, sorry, a list of scenes. Yep, and I could say here if body dot file name in enemy list. So if body dot file name in enemy list and invulnerability frames is stopped, then what we're going to do is start those invulnerability frames. Dollar so sign invulnerability frames dot start. And I'm pretty sure we made them go for 0.5 one shot. So once they start, that's it. Uh, they'll only go once and then they'll stop at the end. So this won't repeat itself while it's stopped. And then lastly, delete that. Lastly, we're going to go player stats dot change health. And I'm going to say negative 50 for this one here. So what should happen is if the enemy is one of those things, it should go and it should trigger that, which it did. It took off half our health. Half our health. Now if I do the same to the enemy in this room, if it's still there, it should walk up to me and trigger the rest of it. Now we haven't actually said what happens when the player dies, but we can do that shortly. Now, lastly, we're gonna add in the code for this one. This is the enemy bullet. Um, we'll go if area.name, remember the enemy bullet has an area on it, which is this here. So if area.name, uh, and we'll say area.filename equals, res scenes forward slash enemy uh, bullet dot tscn then player stats oops, player stats dot change health minus five that doesn't hurt as much and we're also going to remove that bullet so it's going to be area dot get parent which will be the uh, if we look at the bullet, this is the area, that's the parent. Dot Q free. We'll remove that. Okay, the last thing we really need to do is to check to see whether our player dies or not. And um, I have done that. I just need to find where I put it in the code. Um, so you just have to give me a sec while I look for that. Oh, I definitely did it. Um, must be in my movement code. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. So in the process, not physics process, just the general process at the bottom here. If player stats dot get health is less than or equal to zero, we're going to get tree dot reload the current scene and player stats dot change lives negative one. Okay, so once we lose all our health, that should be, I keep typing in like that. That's my mistake. Player stats dot change lives negative one. Everything should be working now. We should be able to shoot the enemies. Did you mean get health? Uh, yes, I did mean get health with the brackets on the end. Okay, so I've got three lives, a thousand ammo. What happened there? Get index file on base area, area dot file name. Okay, so that's not actually colliding at the moment, but it's all right, we'll just check that this works. Okay, so that restarted. Um, it took all my health back to zero. The reason for that is because I didn't actually reset the code here, uh, reset the player health. So what we're gonna do is add a function, reset, where it's going to be health equals um, max or health, health max. 
We're not going to change the MO, we're not going to change the lives. Um, and then in our player code, in our movement script, after we do that there, um, we're going to say player stats.reset. Okay, now what should happen is, should work now. Sometimes that collision doesn't work, but there we go. And now we've got two lives and so on. Bullets go down. Uh, if I let this enemy here walk into me, I lose half my life. And then I've got one health and so on. There was one other thing that I was going to add here, but I seem to have forgotten what it was. So if you remember what it was, um, throw it in the comments below if I said what I was going to do or there's something that I haven't done here. Oh, the, the bullets, the bullets, of course, they're not actually doing anything. Um, they should though. So what we're going to do here is just print area.file name and see what's actually coming through when a bullet hits us to see if that works. So nothing, okay? So on area, area entered, print area.file name. Um, that's definitely linked up with it. Uh, if area.filename equals that, but it's not triggering. Um, let's see why it might not be triggering. Monitoring is on. Uh, let's go to the enemy bullet. Monitoring is um, on this. So, oh, I think I know why. Uh, I'll just print area and see what happened because this here, this is not the file name. We need to get the parent of it to see what the file name is. So let's go ahead and I'll just find where the script is. Um, this should be the last bit of quite a long video. Uh, print area, we'll just see if it's actually registering. It is registering. So what we wanna do is go print, uh, if area.getParent.FileName equals that. So if that is the case, we should lose five health every time we get hit. That's working now. And then when it gets down to zero, if I just go and do that, and then it restarts. So everything is pretty much working now. Uh, in the next few videos, we'll look at adding some power-ups, um, so collectible items that you can put on the ground. I'm not going to model that. Well, I am going to model them, but I'm not going to show you how to do the modeling. They'll be pretty simple and you'll be able to figure it out if you've done everything so far. So that is the video for today. Um, I hope to upload one probably Wednesday or Thursday this week in a couple of days. And so stay tuned for that one.